For 2,000 years, my people, the Jewish people, were stateless, defenseless, voiceless. We were utterly powerless against our enemies who swore to destroy us. We suffered relentless persecution and horrific attacks. We could never speak in our own behalf, and we could not defend ourselves. Well, no more. No more. All right, folks, Benjamin Netanyahu speaking to APAC earlier today. Of course, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, the big speech. Joining us on the Malsberg panel, the host of the syndicated radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, Roger Hedgecock, and spokesperson for the Tea Party Leadership Fund, Katrina Pearson. And welcome to both of you. Let me start with you, Roger. Uh, he made it clear at the beginning that uh, he respects President Obama and respects the office of the presidency, praised the United States bond with Israel and all they've done. But uh, when push came to shove, in my view, he also made it clear that uh, Israel will defend itself whenever and wherever it sees fit. He also talked about previous times when the U.S. had disagreed with Israeli actions, including, but not limited to, the, uh, the bombing of the uh, Iraqi nuclear facility. So I think he was sending an early message in, 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 uh, in, in you know, preview of the speech he's giving tomorrow that uh, Israel will do what it has to do. No question about it, and they will again, because as uh, several rabbis pointed out this morning, in the book of Esther in the Old Testament, the Persian king and his local uh, governor there in, uh, in Israel was going to wipe out all the Jews. He said, on one day I'm going to kill them all. And Esther, of course, was the king's wife, and she was a, a Jew, and she urged the Jews to pray and fast. And then she went in a breach of protocol directly to the king to plead that the, uh, the governor be overruled, and he was. So to this day, Jews uh, know that the threat from Iran, in those days Persia, right, uh, is, is ever present in our current time. If the Iranians, who are now you know, sending planes with supplies to the terrorists in Yemen, uh, are, are, are going to encircle the world with their network of terrorism, as Bibi pointed out in a, in a map he showed today to AIPAC, it, t it turns out that, that he's standing up to the President of the United States in a way that our local Republicans in, in, the, in the United States simply won't do. He's telling the truth. Right, and, that, uh, and you're yeah, absolutely right. And by the way, uh, at, the, at Purim, uh, the story that you're referring to uh, was celebrated uh, uh, yesterday uh, for Jews all over the world. So it's a very right. interesting timing here. Uh, well, what, what about it, Katrina? Um, you know, I guess he bent over backwards to, to be polite, but uh, certainly not deterred. Well, absolutely. What a stand-up guy. You know, what really was pointed out in Netanyahu's speech at APAC was the fact that, you know, how jealous are we as Americans to have such a strong, adamant leader that is out there putting his citizens and his nation first above all else. He made it very clear that, that, that Israel is going to protect themselves no matter what. And I think that's really important here. But more importantly, when we look at our own leaders and how weak and pathetic they look all across the world to be putting their own citizen safety and security at the very least of their priority list, Netanyahu is going to give a strong speech tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. And, and, you know, God bless him for standing up for his nation, because that's something that Americans just haven't seen for themselves in a long time. Uh, absolutely. I, I want you to all hear, both hear this, uh, this uh, ad that was taken out. Uh, give a listen. President Obama is holding secret talks with Iran, even as Iran threatens to wipe Israel off the map. The Israeli prime minister is coming to Washington, but Obama won't talk to him. Instead, Obama and anti-Israel Democrats are boycotting him. Israel's friends, Democrats and Republican, are fighting back. But where's Hillary Clinton? Does she support the boycotters? Or is she too afraid to stand up to them? That's the Emergency Committee for Israel. Uh, Roger, where is Hillary on all this? Well, we don't know, do we? Because as of this moment, there hasn't been a single whisper of an opinion coming out of the uh, Clinton camp. Their, their plant today was, oh, she's going to move up her announcement to April. Well, big deal. Uh, I don't care whether she's announcing or not today or tomorrow or next year. The point is, if she's going to be the leader of the free world, the president of the United States, uh, stand up for her country, then she's going to have to do it today. Does she agree on the threat to Iran, or does she agree that appeasement and a piece of paper is the way to go to control their nuclear ambitions? 
All right, Katrina, when we come back, I'm going to have you weigh in on, uh, on what you just heard and where Hillary stands on this whole uh, Iran, uh, Israel, uh, Netanyahu situation, which we, we really don't know. And then we'll talk about uh, the Wall Street Journal report that says she's announcing in April. And then we also have to talk about what happened on Friday night with the funding of Homeland Security. Don't go away, folks. All right, folks, rejoined by the Molesburg panel, Roger Hedgecock and Katrina Pearson. Katrina, um, you, you heard the, uh, the ad uh, taken out uh, by the Emergency Committee for Israel. Uh, where's Hillary on this whole uh, Netanyahu, Obama, Iran situation? Where is she? Well, where is Hillary on anything at this point in time? And as silly as it may sound to us, we all know the Clintons are very calculating. We know a lot of the base is wanting Elizabeth Warren to run. So she's probably letting everyone else put their cards on the table so that when she does announce, she can let the world know how different she is from her opponents. Um, I think that she will come out. I think she will support Israel in the end. But we're going to have to see. But she's definitely calculating up to this, this big announcement. Roger, um, on Friday night, uh, the news came down that after failing on Friday afternoon to pass funding uh, for three weeks of Department of Homeland Security, uh, mainly because 178 Democrats voted against it, uh, the House did pass uh, a one-week extension. And Nancy Pelosi came right out and said, we, we agreed to that because we were assured as part of the deal that next week, which is this week, we will get a, an up or down vote in the House on a full uh, funding through the fiscal year, so the end of September, September 30th. Um, some people in the Republican leadership have said, no, that's not true. I don't believe it. I don't see any other reason why the Democrats would have changed. I think they, uh, they, they know they're getting that up and down vote, and Boehner's going to have to come up with some explanation. Yes, he is. And there's going to be a meeting tonight, actually, on this subject in the House of Representatives, and more meetings through the week, the preliminary uh, feeling out of McCarthy's office was we wouldn't get any kind of strategy till by Wednesday. Well, Friday, of course, is the deadline. So once again, the Republican leadership is wriggling on the hook here, set by Pelosi in that action you just described. What's going to happen, it seems to me, is either Boehner's going to rely on Democrats again to pass a clean bill and uh, there, thereby set up a challenge to his leadership in the majority Republican caucus, or again, Boehner's going to have to look at Mitch McConnell and say, Mitch, you've simply got to uh, lower this 60-vote filibuster rule down to a majority vote on this appropriation so we can move this forward and make Obama the bad guy by having him veto the Department of Homeland Security because he doesn't want to accept the defunding of his amnesty. You know, Katri uh, Katrina, when I hear the, uh, the, the, the all the... Not only the Democratic strategists and, and politicians who come on the shows, but the hosts of these shows themselves and the mainstream media talk about how the Republicans are to blame and how they screwed up and they can't run sure. a government. They, they really have screwed up. What, I mean, and it's not their fault. I mean, the Democrats are to blame. But for crying out loud, this circus is going on because we have feckless leadership in the Republican Party. There should have been, their, their, their position should have been well stated. They should have changed the rules in the Senate. It already should have been on the president's desk two, three weeks ago to make him veto it and then let the chips fall where they may. Instead, they're only going to cave eventually. And yet they're playing these games that make it look like they're crazy. Well, you're absolutely right. And, you know, American people voted last November to stop executive amnesty. They voted against Obama and all of his policies, which is why conservatives tried to have this fight last November. But yet again, you have this leadership who always kicks the can down the road. They say, oh, we can't fight it right now. We'll fight it next time. Well, guess what? This is next time. So what we're effectively seeing are the leadership who's always blaming Republicans that they don't have a plan when they fight. What exactly was John Boehner's plan for this? And as for the rules, Steve King is proposing something right now as a rule to stop Pelosi from submitting a clean bill for being voted on in the House. And if that doesn't happen, again, it's John Boehner's fault because he knows nothing other than capitulating and allowing this thing to go through. He's going to cave. And this is why conservatives all along have been fighting for new leadership.
Right, and as Roger said, we have a, an opportunity to change the rules in the Senate to get it through. They won't do it. We have now. You bring up this uh, Steve King bill, which could, uh, I believe, what you're saying could block it. And you could That's bet right. Boehner won't allow that to happen either. This is just. This is very, very sad. Very, very sad. Hey guys, uh, thank you very much, Roger Hedgecock and Katrina Pearson. A great panel. Thanks, we'll speak to you soon. All right, folks. Coming up next, you know what's uh, on deck here? It's Give Me Five, and uh, this one. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this one uh, concerns uh, Netanyahu. Uh, don't go away. We're coming right back.